Hari Om, welcome. Shalom Aleikum, Shalom. Um, I am Mathura Das, and welcome to my live share. I think this is number 21 today. Um, I've been really enjoying um, having these live shares. Um, I've been doing it since Easter, and um, I have a kind of, um, I've got people tuning in from all over the world, and lots of friends, old and new. And um, what I do is I have a kind of, I do a few uh, OMs to start off with, to tune myself and allow others just to tune into spiritual vibration. And then um, after that, I do some um, prayers to my guru and the lineage that I belong to. And then I do some chants and maybe a song as well. And then I continue my epic story and um, I've been telling a, a story about uh, my whole journey um, in, in, um, in life and how I managed to end up with the name Matura Das. It's a long historical process involving the East and West coming together, uh, psychedelics, the counterculture in the, in the 60s and 70s. And I've been part of the Krishna movement since 1973 and got my name Matura Das in 74. Been through a whole journey uh, in my previous shares, and um, that's brought us up to um, kind of a, a stage in my whole journey with the, the my journey within the Krishna um, organization, and and also the, the uh, where the Krishna movement itself is going, and I've just been on a um, a long journey um, uh, from the um, from Europe overland with a group of Krishna devotees. And I just got to Bangladesh. That's why I got my live share. So please join me for that. Okay. Hope people are there now. If anybody's there, please say hi. <laughs> it's getting really so. Three arms. Right on. Jnana tu nirannasya Jnananjana salakaya Chakshurum militam yena tasmai Shri Gurude Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobishtam Stapitam yena dutale Swayam rupa kadamayam dadati swabhavam dutam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Juka Padakamala Shri Guru Vaishnava Nishcha Shri Rupam <coughs> Sahagrajata Sahaguna Raghunatham Rupam Tam Sadevam 
Satvaitam, Savadhutam, Parijana Sahitam, Shri Krishna Chaitanya Devam, Shri Radha Krishna Pada, Sahaguna Lalita, Shri Vishakan Yapanascha, Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinabandhu Jagatpate, Gopisha Gopika Kanta Shri Radha Kanta Namostite, Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavanishwari, Vrishabhadu Sute Devi Pranavami Hari Priye, Maja Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaurabhatta Vrinda, Maja Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaurabhatta Vrinda, Vaja Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Garadhara Shri Vasadi Gaurabhakta Vrinda Vancha Kalta Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Vyahiva Cha Patitanam Bhavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namo Namaha Namayo Vishnu Gadaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nati Madhine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Shunyavadi Paskacha Desacharine Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Jai Ho Rama and Sarva Lovely to see you all here um, I'm going to just change the key. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining in. I just, it's so lovely to be able to share this with all, all of you. And um, especially to, today, is, I'm, I'm quite excited. And as in previous ones, if it gets really, you know, kind of, I can sometimes get emotional because I'm kind of reliving the stories and there's some far out stuff going to happen in this one today. And um, I just gave a re recap for, for people at the beginning, uh, you know, about everything that's gone before. So I'm not, I left you all yesterday. If you were there at the share, you, we, we were just kind of me and Ravi had just crossed the border after going to the Mayapur festival uh, and returning back to Bangladesh after coming there overland. But I realized that I actually, um, uh, um, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Jumping ahead of myself. Uh, I realized that I've missed out a few things. So before I, I start, I'm going to backtrack to a few things, important things, like how we found Radhadesh and a couple of other things like that. I, I, I forgot to mention those. They're quite important historical um, things. Okay, so I'm going to do this, uh, the chant. It's my composition. Um, it's, a, it's a famous chant. Uh, some devotees don't like it. Um, apparently, I don't know, it's not authorized. But anyway, it's going to become authorized halfway through. It's going to turn into Om Namo Narayanaya, and the Raga will, will change. But it's uh, Sri Krishna Govinda Hare Murari, E Natha Narayana Vasudeva. Absolutely proper name. Anyway, here we go. And I, you imagine the tablets.
Krishna Govind. Sorry. Sri Krishna Govind Hari Murari. Hold on. Sri Krishna Govind Hari Murari. Devatam Narayana Vasudeva. Shri Krishna Govinda Hari Murari Shri Krishna Govinda Hari Murari Ehata Narayana Vasudeva Ehata Narayana Vasudeva Shri Krishna Govinda Hari Murari Shri Krishna Govinda Hari Murari Ehata Narayana Vasudeva Shri Krishna Govinda Krishna Govinda Hari Murari Shri Krishna Govinda Hari Murari Enata Narayana Vasudeva
Um, do you know what? I've just, I'm just going to go straight into the story for now. It's amazing. Since I started talking about Bangladesh in my head, I've just, the last few days, just been going over. I even had a talk to my, uh, Kiran in, her, in Hawaii last night, just to, um, who spent 10 years on and off um, in Bangladesh and West Bengal. And I was just trying to get the dates exactly right. and Because uh, we were really kind of pioneers. Um, one of the couple of the Swamis had gone there during the Pakistan-Bangladesh war in 71, around that time. Gargamuni may have gone there. He may have, a couple of people went there. Um, and Vyasaki and... Um, Narayan, what's his name? Hari Narayan, I think his name is. I can't remember. Anyway, they are kind of um, they were on the Library Party, and Vyasaki was on a mission to um, uh, learn Kirtan and know more about it. So he had this very very good Nagamichi uh, tape recorder that he went around to villages and recorded lots of Kirtan at that time. But I'm going to uh, come back to that in a minute. But that that's how the kind of devotees started to kind of like get based in Bangladesh. Um, and uh, that's when I came come in, come into the story. But I'm just going to kind of um, just uh, before I carry on with that story, I'm just going to um, because um, in that year of uh, seventy eight, uh, just before I left and had the um, confrontation with Bhagavan, um, what was happening was the lease with the um, the rent for the hearing glut was running out and they, we actually they were looking for a, uh, alternative accommodation for the community and a few of us were kind of um it was our kind of service 
actually was to, to be kind of, kind of um, go and look at properties and see if we could find anything suitable both in Holland and in Belgium and uh, for Mukta Sangha and me went most of the time and then also sometimes Mrigapati was there and Rana Duramida and um, we had seen some you know mo you know what do you get for a, you know and that we're all kind of initially, um, you know, there was still paranoia about atom bombs and all those different things, and, and war still is. And so there was all this thing of possibly trying to get someplace out in the country. Nobody was really kind of sure what kind of um, building was available, because now the community that had grown, we had two buildings in Amsterdam, one on the Heeringrad, one on the Keizersgrad. Women, men, and, you know, all of the temple, and we... The kind of things that we were looking at were monasteries and schools mostly and a few chateaus but not so much in Holland. When we kind of ran out of options around Holland after looking at a few and they were quite far out but we just thought they were just not uh, suitable or they were you know, kind of soulless. And then we went down to Belgium, we had these estate agents looking for us and they would find these places and tell them and we would go and see a few in, in a day. And uh, one of them was just, I mean I talk about it was picturesque, but totally impractical. It had a moat round it, and you went over the moat, and it was all kind of had ceilings with clouds on it. And uh, one of the one of the you know that's kind of um, weird wallpaper you see. I think it was maybe not wallpaper, but it was for the walls. It was embossed. One of them had these incredible kind of embossed materials all over it, but none of them were practical. And then. Um, after looking for quite a few, we got another call and a few addresses, and me, Mrigapati, uh, Rana Durmada and Bimukta Sangha ended up going to this place near Septon, not far from Liège, and um, <coughs> it's, it's down in the kind of, a, it's where Holland and Belgium kind of meet near Maastricht down there, and uh, we kind of, we were waiting for somebody to come, uh, uh, um, we, with the travel agent, we were following. We had a car, he had a car, but we were waiting for the owner. And we arrived, and we came to arrive in this little village, and there was this very gothic-looking kind of chateau. I mean, it look, looks much older than it actually is, because actually it's a, it's a copy, maybe 19th century, of a much older building. And um, we were looking at it, and, you know, pretty stunned. And we were just kind of, we had our civvies on, and uh, then um, it was like something else, like a James Bond movie. Suddenly, this kind of amazing Lotus Elan car slithered in, and this guy jumped out with these kind of boots, leather boots, looking really cool. His name was Serge, and he was the owner. And he was very charismatic um, chap. And he'd had the property for about five years, and um, he'd actually kept the heating on so to stop it, uh, you know, uh, 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 rot rotting and keeping it alive. And he hadn't lived in it. He wasn't sure what to do with it. He'd bought some a whole bunch of adjacent land, and he just wanted to stop people hunting and stuff like that. He was really cool, and he was a bit of a maverick, and that's why he kind of quite liked the idea of kind of, of the Krishna community. Um, uh, you know, even though we didn't look like full on Hare Krishnas, he kind of knew we were, and um, and then. We went in, we looked all around, but it was when we actually went into the basement of the kitchen down, the down area. And it had been used during the war by nurses, it had been used as some kind of convalescence home. And so it had, it was a kind of a practical building. It was the first one we'd seen. It was so solid. And it had a walk-in fridge, it had these massive cooker things and everything. And you could just see that that would obviously work for a community it was the only one that we'd see that was anything close to it and anyway months and months later uh, you know, or not that long afterwards Bhagavan went to see it and the person who really knows all lots of the stories is from Muktasanga but also Raja Vidya so maybe one day Raja Vidya will give a, a, a talk he was there involved in, um, in with all of the beginning I heard some amazing stories when I went there um, down a couple of years ago for a reunion he told me about stuff because even though I was there, I kind of um, was there and we discovered it, I wasn't really going to stay in there as part of the community because my destiny was taking me in another direction. So that's one of the things that I wanted to uh, uh, talk about. So that was good. Now, uh, Radhadesh is most probably one of the most successful ISKCON centers in the whole Western world, as far as I know. And it's a beautiful place. Everyone who goes there, it's a beautiful location. 
and uh, they've done tons of renovation work. And they've got guest houses and they have a restaurant and a shop and the theatre room is fantastic. I was there at the beginning when they had all these local kind of guys come and do all the marble work and the paintings and they had to do but rather Gopinath and, and Jagannath and uh, Baladev Subhadra and Rani Tiger, and they all came from Holland and they changed their, their residence. And uh, as Paravida mentioned the other day, after the healing gracht closed, the, in, at least in Amsterdam, the temple never really recovered because all the kind of center from the zone, kind of the energy was siphoned down to Radhadesh as the center, and Amsterdam became secondary. That was just what happened. Well, it's a shame about that. Uh, but I've never been really. That's never been part of my my, my history. And um, there was also another thing before um, uh, uh, leaving off with Ravi and all the chaps overland. There was um, I was mentioning the other day, uh, yesterday, about after the post war, after the post um, Prabhupada and the gurus becoming gurus. There was a group in Vrindavan, the Yashoda Nandan, Guru Kripa, and Prajuna, that were quite anti. They were the first kind of group of kind of um, power group, but they were in a minority who were kind of like questioning the stance that the uh, the new gurus were taking in their new role. And uh, um, you can go and Google it if you're interested. It's called Prajumna's Letter to the GBC. The amazing thing is if they'd listened to what he'd said, I mean, the things could have been so much better. He was he, Everything that he said was spot on. The way that the role that they were uh, taking, how they were inter interpreting their roles as gurus, and he got into the etiquette and, and how it should be. And he'd been around Prabhupada uh, in the last, day, you know, very close with Prabhupada all the time. And he knows that none of these things were said by Prabhupada for them to take, uh, to, to, to interpret the role of being gurus in the way that they did. So that letter had gone around, and people had seen that letter. And that letter was in the end of 78, that letter had gone around. And and then the other thing that I forgot to mention was that we also went, as we were going across India to go to Bengal, back to Bengal, or to, uh, after coming across from um, Overland from Europe, we um, we went, I told you we went to Varanasi, we went to Nanashranga, but I forgot to mention we went to Ayodhya. And um, um, it was something quite lovely happened in terms of um, um, seeing the actions of one of your friends and devotees doing some an, an, an act of real compassion. So what happened, happened was we spent the night in our van. I know we only, we only had one van in the square in Ayodhya. There's just a kind of a square. We just parked our van there, and uh, very it was very quiet in those days. Very very quiet, and we slept in the van. And what we had bought, we'd bought these kind of little water spray things that were good for kind of just spraying. Um, the windows, different things if we needed moisture. It was quite hot as well. You just kind of sprayed yourself with water, just getting up, building up. And um, in the morning, when I woke up out of the van, I got out the back to go to go to find someone to go to the toilet, maybe. I saw that there was this person on the floor, totally naked, with no hands and no feet, completely covered in black grime and dirt and everything, and was writhing there with kind of foam coming out of the mouth. And I was just frozen and shocked. And then I think somebody else came out, and we were looking there, and just then a lady, a local lady, just opened her kind of like chai shop, and we were all kind of like, oh, we were so shocked about it. We were just kind of paralyzed, didn't know what to do. And then Pitamba, I think we either mentioned it or Pitamba just jumped out, and without even a, th a think, a think, he just went straight to the uh, to the man, and he just said, "Bring some water, bring this," and he said, uh, and he said to the lady, "Bring a blanket, bring some chai," and we all just started doing this thing. And Pitamba stood there, sat with the guy, put put, put the, we put a blanket over him. He got some water and he sprayed his mouth, and got we got some water and he all gave it to the guy who's sipping it. Um, we th we did. He looked like he was dying, but he was uh, he was obviously um, um, he, well. He could have died. He was um, suffered from exposure. He was just out, completely um, under under the elements, with no hands and feet. It's, it's quite an intense thing to kind of witness and experience, especially in somewhere like India. But with literally, 
the lady had made some chai and he'd managed to get a chai and after the wars had gave the whole hill to the chai there and kind of gradually in some way he kind of came alive you know he was he wasn't dead he was just he just needed some uh, a, a, some comfort and some things and uh, i thought i'd just mention that because uh, you know that story may never have been told it's just to show you how you can tell the heart of somebody uh, whatever things might go on in their life and you can see uh, the, the, the spontaneous act of compassion there that was wonderful and i know for many years they somebody did lots of things to help people so very happy tucker who's now in germany after a, a motorbike accident not doing very well he had a bit of brain damage so haven't heard about him for a little bit but hope he's recovering um so i that was i think i thought i had to mention that um where are we sorry let's go back to my notes uh, okay oh the other important thing that i didn't mention as well was um we went to Bangladesh and I told you we came to the Mayapur festival and I talked about that Nam Kirtan group I saw, a uh, very good Kirtan group in Navadri. But also something else quite important happened. For those who have been following the story, uh, just uh, kind of before my big, the big journey overland, the one of the reasons for leaving Amsterdam was because of a confrontation with Bhagavan in his room. And I've described that a few shares back. Now, what happened was he was there at the Mayapur, everybody's there at the Mayapur Festival, and I was standing at the back watching him give a class, and I had still all these bitter feelings, you know, for the examination of that. You know. And uh, but Chanarari, who was my friend, who, you know, who left Bangladesh now and come to Mayapur, he was going to go off to his career after this. He, um, he wanted to go and see Bhagavan, because he hadn't seen him for ages. And... Um, and so he, Bhagavan, had his room up on the Lotus building. So after this class and everything, we both went up together. But I said to Chandra, well, I'm not going in. You can go in. And Chandra said, OK, OK. So I, I, I kind of went up and stayed on the veranda, hanging over the wall a little bit, away from the, the door, so I couldn't be visible. And Chanarari went in, and I could hear everything. And you know, he paid his pranams. And Bhagavan, the first thing goes, yes, where's Matura? because he knows that we were all hanging out together and heard that we heard that we were there and Chanarari says oh he's a bit upset about what happened in Amsterdam he says oh and then he said call from the room he said Matura please come and I'm sort of and I go into the room and offer my respects and and, you know, and he pays his respects, and that's just I just sit there, and the first thing he does is he says, "I'm very sorry. I really apologise uh, for how I treated you in Amsterdam. I was, it was, I did it wrong. It was very wrong. I shouldn't have treated you like that." And as soon as he did that, it's, it's, it's magic. This thing, isn't it? Uh, when somebody apologises, um, uh, you know, there's an automatic uh, kind of it breaks a, 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 a spell of resentment that may have been caused in whatever way anyway so and then you know immediately we were but we were kind of okay again you know despite all my reservations about the guru trip and everything at least on a personal level uh, we were friends again and he even you know we even ended up going to Kolkata and buying him a harmonium and doing a whole bunch of stuff uh, but it was a relief for me as well uh, to have that kind of sorted out so I thought because it, it, in my next um, uh, shares, I'm going to talk about things. And if I hadn't mentioned that reconciliation, it wouldn't have made sense. And uh, so there you go. I've done all my backtracking now. OK, well, here we are. We're back. I'm bringing everybody back to the story. Um, after that festival in Mayapur, because I'd already been to Bangladesh, come back for the festival, Chanarari had left Bangladesh, and now I was going back with Rasika. Uh, in our van, and we had a, 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 I don't know if we'd already taken the um, generator in the last one, but we were taking books and stuff anyway, lots of stuff. And, and I talked about that lovely little endearing thing at the border. Um, it's quite amazing. To get to Dhaka, you have to kind of go a long way on roads and then go on a ferry across rivers. But that's basically a lot of what Bangladesh is. It's traveling on lots and lots of uh, ferries across rivers at certain times it's there's a lot of water you've got 
the Ganga coming down from one side, and then you've got the uh, Brahmaputra coming, and then they, they meet at, at this near the head. It's, there's points sometimes in Bangladesh where you get to, um, when you're going especially south towards the estuary, Bay of Bengal, if it just comes so wide you can't see the banks, it's like an ocean. Um, you don't really see it that big anywhere, except maybe in the monsoon seasons in other parts of northern India, but it's just amazing. And they have these quite quaint uh, kind of paddle steamers. I don't know if they still have them, well, they did have them there, and they remind you of like Mississippi paddle steamers. Um, slightly kind of alcohol, kind of funky version, but they give you that mood. And so we crossed over there uh, because last time I went, I went, I flew uh, with um, Prabhu Vishnu. Well, we did come back that way, that's true, uh, and, 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 and to uh, the festival. So I had this experience with going on these rivers, and um, I knew it was going to be part of the whole story. So when we got to Dhaka, um, um, I think what had happened was um, Maha Krithu, another devotee, who um, Brother Vishnu had recruited in the festival had come with him, and they'd flown into Dhaka, and so now and then there, so there was Vyasaki there, there was Brother Vishnu, uh, there was me, Rasika, Maha, yeah, Mahaprabhu. That was it at that time, and, and maybe I don't know if there was any Bengali devotees. I'm not really sure at that time, but Chanarari wasn't there, and where the the centre was was in a kind of um, middle class suburb. And it was uh, called in a place called Tej Kunipara, and it was quite a it was a typical kind of modern Indian Bangladeshi kind of house. Um, um, it didn't have too it had a big big roof, had quite a big floor, had quite a few rooms and a kitchen. And one room that was put aside as like the little temple room, um, and a couple of bathrooms. And the landlord was a chap called Mister Burry, who was rather friendly. Chanarari had. Uh, uh, took me over there because we'd made quite a good he'd made quite a good friendship with him over the years and um they rented it from him and um and there was lychee trees and mango trees i think jackfruit trees in the garden and there was even its own hall that uh, off season they would grow vegetables in um so it was decided what we were going to do um we over the uh, because now we had this vehicle that we brought overland it was we were going to use it for what it was brought for and um we were going to rasika uh, had uh, been in bengal for quite a while west bengal and actually knew bengali and he was a, we, we got on really really well really really well he was from new zealand he'd been in university studied chemistry he was very broad-minded and uh, we just got on really always did i'd like to have a chat with him on the phone so maybe i will um, uh, Mahakratu, who I wasn't quite sure of, um, it was a bit incongruous, and we weren't really kind of like kind of, um, upwardly mobile, proactive to be leaders and stuff. And somehow or other, he got um, 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 made the leader of our group. Just three of us. Um, most probably not the best decision, but it, it managed. We were all quite easygoing. Um, um, he, he Mahakratu was in kind of. He was in an unknown territory for him, this kind of villages in Bengal. And he wasn't as into Indian culture as we were. He was a bit more kind of westernized. And we were both actually very specific in coming on these journeys to come to these places to get away from all of the kind of western package. We wanted to go kind of native in a sense. Um, but anyway, there you go. That was it. We were there, and the, we had we looked on these maps. We got all these maps out, and then we looked at the territory. And they, there were certain areas that no devotees had gone uh, before. And we had a kind of a program that what we were going to do is we were we had this generator, and we had some funds from Prabhupada's uh, 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 fund for feeding poor people. Basically, we had a whole bunch of funds for making wherever we went. If we put on a little kind of event. We could get, we could uh, procure grains and dal and at least cook a big for all the people that would come to the, the the little mini event that it was going to be and we had slides and a projector and maybe we had our own screen as well that could be put up in any village it was just a kind of a big sheet and um, and the idea was they looked at the map and they they it was like okay they knew that this one area in Bangladesh. There were certain areas where there were like little oases 
or strongholds of Hindus, and they all live very um, separate. In Hindi, we say alag, alag, separate, you know. You have the Muslim villages, and then you have the Hindu villages, and sometimes you have loads and loads of Hindu villages in big, big areas. That's what it was like, at least in 79. Uh, but uh, over, actually, in the whole of, uh, during the 20th century, um, uh, Bengal went through huge political upheavals and was cut in half once by the British, and then that border was taken away. There had been communal tension for a long, long, long time uh, going on between the Hindus and Muslims in Bangladesh. And um, um, so there was always this thing, and there still is to this day, but now the Hindus are such a minority. Um, anyway, and, but the, uh, and, and, and actually the Gaudiya Vaishnav, you could say that uh, some of the most famous people in the Gaudiya uh, tradition, including Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his family, actually come from East Bengal. They come from Shilek, from Dakodakin. And um, uh, uh, Jagannath Mishra's family, uh, he came from there to settle in Nadavu. Advaita Acharya came from there, Nadavendra Puri, they all came from Shilek. My dear friend Himanshu Goswami, he's from also from Shilek. It's a big strong stronghold of Vaishnavism. Uh, and the other place that we where we were going to is a Raj Sahi. There's a district Raj Sahi, uh, which is kind of north um, westish of 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 uh, of, of uh, Dhaka, and it kind of borders onto India up there. And it's quite a big area. But we were just going to go. We had this plan of just kind of heading. Um, uh, because it, what happens is when you go, you start going into these areas. You one contact leads to another contact leads to another contact, and they already had quite a few contacts. But this area, we were just kind of just going to go and see what would happen. It was quite exciting. So after getting settled and everything uh, in and uh, getting everything sorted, our kind of kind of route uh, uh, worked out. We left kind of quite early one morning. Uh, so that sounds like a folk song, doesn't it? And and uh, we let off. We went off, and it was it was um, what was it? Yeah, it was after holy, so heat was beginning to pick up. It wasn't as cool as it was a few weeks before. You know, anybody who spends time in India, especially in the eastern part of India, it really picks up after holy. Uh, the the temperatures can start shooting into the late nineties and hundreds, and everything is there. Uh, it all depends where you are. Lucky in Bangladesh, even though it's very humid, there is lots of water. So as we travelled out of Dhaka, we came, I remember, we came to the big river uh, uh, where we were going across. I think that was the, um, the Padma. I think that was, or the Brahmaputra. That was the Brahmaputra we crossed. It was really quite big, but not as big down as down, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, we got on one of the ferries, and, uh, and, and, uh, um, and we crossed over. And... As we, and, and, and uh, Rasika was driving, it was just us three, my, me and Mahatra too, and we went our civvies, and we drove for quite a while, and um, we didn't want to go on too late, because, you know, you know it was starting to go from into the afternoon, and uh, we didn't want to get, we wanted to get wherever we were going to get before dark. And I think we just kind of went over a little bridge, a small little river, and then suddenly, it was this thing that we did. It was called spot the doti. As soon as you spotted the doti, you were in. That's all you needed was one chap in a doti. So as we were psychic, we suddenly saw a doti, and it was like, <clears throat> and um, and Brasico, uh, uh, we kind of called the chap. Uh, there was somebody on a, on a bicycle, really, and uh, Brasico just said spoke in Bangla to him, and he just said. Um, 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 where is, is, where is the Hindu area? Where are all the Hindus living, really? And he laughed and smiled. And he actually, I think, it, it, we were actually almost right there. We were just in this kind of smallish uh, 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 villagey thing, <laughs> but it was off the main road, so it wasn't that small. And he just kind of turned his bike round and he just kind of said, follow me. And we drove with our car, just went off the road, and parked the car under these kind of like, palm trees in a kind of courtyardy area and there was a big house with tiles and a veranda and wooden pillars and it looked like definitely somebody of importance lived there and we got out of the car and I think the chap who brought us there kind of went over there and said look there's some foreigners here 
And so we run over and um, he looked very bewildered. The chap who came out, he had his kind of hair a bit disheveled and he just had a lovely speech. He's taking a rest and had his lungy on and he was like, who are we? Of course, we didn't like, you know, who are we? we? You know, we could become Christian missionaries. You could tell who he looked like. He had a kind of, uh, didn't have, look like Christ and others. Um, and they'd never seen foreigners as far as we knew, and at least belonging to the, 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 you know, the Western devotees. And then as soon as, in, within just a couple of minutes of, of, of I think, Rasika maybe got the book. That was it. He took a book and he just showed him the pictures of Mayapur and the books. And the guys completely transformed and he got it and he kind of just went really really excited and then you know it was like calling and you know calling out to the wife to the people you know servants or whatever whatever it was and the next thing you know we was kind of like you know sit there uh, uh you know refreshments were brought on the table and 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 then suddenly it was all just kind of like me and mahakra too were just kind of like watching it all happen because all the conversation and everything was happening between rasika and this gentleman and Rusika basically explained to him what we wanted to do. We wanted to kind of, we'd come there and we had this generator, we had a slideshow, we had some money for, to, to, to give towards uh, food for, the, for a big feast. Well, not a big feast, but at least the basics for lots and lots of people. And, and, uh, and, and, and it was all, there was this suddenly this buzz. And it was, in, I've never experienced this ever before. Uh, um, so, and the surrounding is just everything is lush, lush, lush. Uh, there's just this greenery of, of, of trees everywhere around, you know, with uh, mango trees and lychee trees and jackfruit trees and coconut trees and palm trees and papaya trees. And then the kind of, wherever there's kind of courtyards, they're all kind of immaculately cleaned with cow dung and bark, and they all look like beautiful. And, and another far out thing happened just at this moment when we arrived there. I mean, I wasn't quite sure. I thought it was kind of specially put on for us. But actually, there was they have these um, um, village uh, musicians and troops that just wander from village to village. You know? And suddenly, all of a sudden, this group appeared while we were on this veranda as the guests of this people and all these village kids and people around. They're all looking at us. And suddenly this group came in and it was like a, an instant kind of festival. Uh, this guy in the lead group, he had really thick matted hair, and he looked quite wild. And then, you know, he was playing this medanka, and they were doing the dancing and singing and playing the things. They were a little family troupe, you could tell it. Um, and it was all about Radha and Krishna. It was fantastic. Um, we were just like, I was just in bliss, basically. This was just like the beginning. It was just started. We just arrived, you know. It was all just kind of going on. And that kind of finished. And then he kind of mentioned to the, the kids, Da, 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 this is what's going to happen. Every year. And this whole thing, this collective thing, it's incredible. They were all just kind of like, um, it was amazing watching the village because it's a village tribal thing. All they just need to know is this thing that's going on and they all just do it. And it's like some big, it's, it's like some, uh, yeah, it's more than just an individual. And so all of the, sorry, all of the, um, um, they sweeped everything off, everything was cleaned, and they took us off to another house where we could stay and have our bath, our shower, in a pukor. And I had one pukor bath, and this was a, oh my goodness, I remember going to the house, we got our little rooms, everybody was just so excited and so hospitable, we just had to let go and everything was, we had these little rooms in the mud house, they'd given us each kind of like, I think, I don't know if we had a room each, or we shared a couple of rooms each, and we changed uh, into our gumptures, put our stuff there, and we went off to have these. Uh, they we were these little kids uh, that took us down to the pukor, to the, the bathing pukor, and it was just like paradise. It really was. It was a small pukor, not too big like the other one. And I remember walking into it and going, "This is. It's like out of some kind of a you know kind of Disney movie or something, you know." Everyone's happy. There's this festive atmosphere, um, and then we just kind of plunged into these pools. It was all just so cool, and everyone's just laughing. And then we get back, dry ourselves up, and then we. This happened while we. This is the first time it happened where we would change and put on our tilak. And we put on. We were all brahmacharis wearing saffron, um, and and when we came out of the room, dressed with the tilak and the saffron, everyone's expressions changed. They were like, 
it was like we went out of our kind of silly mode into this mode uh, 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 see what we're experiencing is not, it's not what kind of backpackers or people would be experiencing going on, or the holiday makers going on, on holiday it was a very kind of unique type of experience uh, a real very fortunate of the experience especially at this time of being so pristine and being kind of first people to go to to ever go there foreigners anyway and um and then this whole kind of uh, 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 then it was kind of getting darker and darker and darker and they would made a whole kind of area where the local kirtan people the people who went to sing they'd already come everything was so organized they were all just sitting there we sat down and everyone was just this thing mutual mind love thing we're all looking at them and they're looking at us i just can th feel like i've just entered into some part of goranga leela and it's all fabulous and they then they start to do their kirtan and many people in Bengal, they do that similar melody in the evening. Do you, do you, do, 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 do. But they, you know, they have this whole kind of evening thing, and then they did this kirtan, and all the children uh, in these villages. That's the um, one of the amazing things. They all kind of like kind of like a choir. They've been trained by the kirtan people, and they all sing this incredibly high thing. And the kirtan, and they sang a few songs, and then it was over to us they wanted us to sing a little bit and that would always be a little testing and um i just kind of led some simple uh, chant because i was the best chanter in the group and um we didn't play mudanga they played i just said ring, 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 ring. i just led with some cartels and and that was uh, that was that really and um, and then it was to uh, um, and then they were all really really excited and they put up these bamboo poles and the sh uh, put these sheets across because they were going to have a slideshow. And um, they, it was a whole big uh, a thing with the um, the table, putting up the slide projector. Rasika was totally in charge of all of that. And um, what would what had happened was I think as well was that um, Mahakratu had gone earlier uh, uh, as well. Um, with the head of the village or somebody who was important in the village who'd been uh, deputed, deputed to do this task and he, they'd gone and actually procured all the rice and the dal from the shop with some money and instantly some people had been dug a big pit over to the side they had the big, a big pot miraculously appeared the wood and already the kind of the cooking of, of, the, of the kitchery and everything had already started it was all just happening this thing was just happening and it was all under the stars in the village courtyard. It was just uh, incredible. I'd, I'd never seen the slideshow. I didn't know what was going to happen. I was just kind of watching it all happen as the, because, uh, you know, um, I, uh, and I was kind of like making sure going over to where the kitchen was, looking at the people and everything. And, and um, there was this one bit I always remember in the slideshow. Now, many of Bangladesh's who are Gaudiya Vaishnavas because they are poor and they live in kind of more remote areas. They've only heard of Vrindavan, heard of Namadrupa Mayapur. Uh, many of them have never been there, so they're all they're all in, they all have a kind of mood of separation from the holy places. I only discovered this after being there, and uh, and, and and you know uh, that all you know because. Uh, it, you know, because the majority is, is Islamic, and, and they're quite a kind of quite a, 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 a subdued, basically, by the overwhelming uh, a kind of a Muslim presence. And most of these, there are lots of Vaishnava, small little Vaishnava places in Bangladesh, but the, you know, the, the major places being Dam, Navadvip, Ayodhya, Varanasi, everything's over there. And so, when um, the, the, the 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 slideshow was all about. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu really, and it showed pictures of Navadweep and my, you know, pictures of Kirtan, and he would give a few comments, and then there was a picture in Puri because uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had been to Puri, and at the Gambia, his the wooden chapels, his uh, sandals are kept in a box, and I think they're covered with sandalwood that's been offered on them, and and uh, there was a picture there that he projected, and I just remember watching that. Everyone, just the noise of the the generator was going. 
to put they put a few light bulbs and stuff up everything was a couple of light bulbs had been lit up for the village and the projector all for the, you know for this generator and um and he just said i remember i think he did yeah he had a mic he had a microphone he had a microphone and a speaker and he said and i just remember the whole audience going oh, wow, honey, wow, honey, wow. you know like really you know he all oh, that's what he said he said the shoes of Mahaprabhu, and i just remember the, the, all the crowd going and so there was this bit where we wanted to kind of offer the uh, um, um, the 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 the, um, the kitchery, you know, and so we they came up with this idea. They just put this huge big cloth on the ground, massive cloth, got the pot after it'd been cooked, and just poured the whole pot like a huge massive mound. And then they brought a chair, and um, and and I got from the I bought I got from our van uh, pictures of Prabhupada, Mahaprabhu, Radha Krishna, and uh, they put a cloth and. Um, and I sat down to do, uh, you know, an offering. I had my my koita, my gayatri, and I started to do the mantras. I've never done anything like this before. And uh, while uh, uh, the uh, Rasika was carrying on, I was doing this whole thing on the side, and um, and Mahakrishu was mostly just watching everything as well. And I did, and I did the offering. And when I kind of like opened my eyes, all the pictures were covered with garlands and flowers that. People had just come and made and put them there while I was doing the offering. It was all just so beautifully spontaneous. And 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 when I went to do my pranams uh, after doing the mantras, all the people there went down and did pranams together. <laughs> it did remind me almost a bit of Life of Brian. <laughs> but um, it was uh, not that I'd seen it yet, but when I did see it, I thought, oh, yeah, I've been there, that one. Um, and it was uh, the the mood was wonderful. All of it, and then when the um, uh, slideshow had been finished, suddenly it was announced, well, you know, Prashadam, you know, everybody, all the village people, and suddenly they were all boom, 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 boom. Everyone's laid down, and all of those those kirtaniers, the people who'd been doing the kirtan, they were the ones that kind of like did all the. There was uh, uh, buckets, and they went round, and they just went round to everybody and did all the prashadam distribution. And it was just fantastic. I just never for, forget that first celebratory experience in, in Bangladesh. It was fantastic. Um, it was one of the best, actually, that very, very first. It was just kind of, it was just so spontaneous and unplanned. And it's amazing how I, I can just remember all these details to this day. The sounds of the kirtan, the mood of the evening with the stars, kind of up above in the palm trees. Um, and, I've, and that Mohopubu chapel from Rosika, it was wonderful. And um, while we were there, uh, because you know all the villages are connected, there was a lady who was from another village who was a Vaishnavi who'd seen us, and um, we didn't know this, but behind our backs, they would kind of we kind of woke up in the morning, and it was like, okay, this is what's happening. You're all going to go now to this village because this lady saw you, and she's going to invite you. And we were, and we were like, wow, and we were like. It was a bit kind of we'd never been invited to a, 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 a lady, and they said she is a very, very good lady, a great Vaishnavi. You know, they wanted to explain to us a few people, and somebody from the village was going to come with us and take us to the place where we were going. So that's where we um, went. It just kind of this is what we just started with that one doti, and the next thing we were just in it. We were in the the, the, the thing. So. Uh, and we weren't hanging out long time. We well, we didn't really know what we were doing. We were just going with the flow. And when we got to this other place, it was a very different um, uh, atmosphere. It wasn't quite as idyllic. And it was near a school playing field, of, of a local school. But there was a whole little enclave of Hindu houses. But when we came to her house, oh my goodness, it was all the made with clean white sheets from the edge of the floor with a jasmine palace everywhere and it was like oh my goodness it's just so humble it was so beautiful and so devotional it was almost kind of like almost too much to take the hospitality on this level and they want to do these things they all they want to kind of kind of uh, wash your feet and everything and you have to kind of like uh, stop them really otherwise it can get it can get out of hand to the level of devotion um, and and and, and um, that night we did a similar kind of program. Quite a few people came, but this time there was a few Muslim uh, people watching what we were doing. In fact, a policeman even came in the evening 
because he'd heard through the buzz that we're, we, they wanted to know what we were really, Christian missionaries, what we were trying to do. And we just said, no, no, we just come to see some of our Christian friends and things like that. But we could see it's maybe not the best place to spend too long. And um, when it came to the, uh, quite a lot of people came for the slideshow and everything, um, there was a bit of agitation from some of the local, uh, uh, when they were offered prashadam, and they were like, we don't want to come to see prashadam, you know, and so we thought, well, we'll, we'll try and kind of wind, we, we kept out of the way a bit and let all the locals do, do the thing. Um, and then, um, as far as I remember, before we got to Rod Sahi, then we came to this other really fantastic village. This was also uh, 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 incredible. Uh, um, this could have been where we are, it was around the Pubna district leading up to Rad Sahi. Um, we just kind of parked our car and found out there was this, we mostly came with, each village, somebody came with us to take us to somewhere else generally. That's what happened, not all the time. And we arrived in this one village and uh, we went, I think we'd just crossed a, a, a ferry, I remember, we had the, the, the small ferry, we had the van up, parked, and we were just trying to figure out where to go and what to do. And somebody took us uh, before we drove the van um, into kind of down towards this little village area. And as I was walking this past this one hut, this incredible Vaishnav with his hair like that, kind of very handsome, and, and, and he just went, Arriba! Arriba! and he was called Nitai. His name was Nitai. And he just said, Come into my house, you know, please, you know. And we just kind of like just walked in and he was sitting down and he just kind of got out the harmonium and just started singing bhajans. It was just like, wow, it was incredible. And I just sat there and, and of course some refreshments came and everything. And then Rasika came and, and we explained what we were there to do. We, well, I think all the other guy explained, everybody kind of knew what was happening. And then we met the other people in the village and they were all these lovely farmer types, you know. And uh, they all had Kunti Mala, and they all had these lovely, pure expressions on their faces, all very, very endearing, and these lovely huts with, uh, if it, uh, with mostly with thatch, yeah, and they were bamboo and mud, and with all, so everything was so impeccably clean. And uh, we went through a, a similar type of a scenario in this village, but um, again, we were in our civvies, and they hadn't really seen us as, as you know, kind of, they, you know, he, he understood that the village people were still trying to get their head around actually who we were, what we were, you know, what we were doing there. And it's a good question: what were we doing there? Um, um, we definitely, you know, devotees were preaching, and you know, we definitely weren't <laughs> preaching to anybody, and we definitely need, need, weren't into converting anybody because these people have been, uh, you know, uh, generations ahead of us in the game, and we're just we've been kind of expect, you know dabbling in their culture for the last few years over in the West. And I've driven thousands of kilometers across uh, miles across, you know, from Europe to here, just to meet these people and, and to see how they live and what their culture is. And, and, um, and we, anyway, we were there really to, um, because they were starved of literature and their kind of Vaishnava uh, 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 literature, that's what we felt was uh, they were they really wanted one of the Gita's and there was copies of Prabhupada's Bengali Gita Gan and a few other small books have been translated into Bengali, and that was it. And it was it was basically to kind of like um, give them strength and hope. This thing that I explained before that um, you know there's actually this big tribe that's growing internationally. That's you know the Baranga tribe that's been spread internationally by Dr. Vinata Swami who was from Kolkata and we are your cousins, spiritual cousins from the other side of the world. And and and, and I mean, for me, I, I, I was just, I was there for the, I don't want to say for the ride, but it was for, for the experience of just meeting these people and hearing their kirtan, seeing their lifestyle, just having their association and sharing, sharing as brothers of a tribe. That was our, our, our vibe, basically. Anyway, we got out of our truck after having the pakor, bathing, putting the tea light, and again, this thing, you get out of the truck and you come into the village and people just look at you. And they see you in saffron and, and, and tea light and, and everything. Um, and then we sat down and there was this lovely moment where um, they wanted us to sing first. 
So we did a little kit and we, you know, and, you know, and we just got it over and done with. And I wanted now this Nittai who I've met earlier, you could think he was the main kit on singer of the village, and he had trained the children. And he started to sing these kids' kits and everything with that little air that everyone was aware of, and it was in this village atmosphere, absolutely incredible. Like I, like I keep saying, out of Goanga Lula, and um, as he was singing, the children made a kind of a, they. He was singing, they kind of sang a wrong note or something, and he looked round like that, and, he went, and they all went kind of like this, and he was like this, and he was very strict about it. And then he started getting absorbed, and there was this bit where he kind of looked over at us, and we looked at him. And as he went to sing, he started singing. He, he, he got choked up with emotion. And what was wonderful about this uh, scenario was, because when you spend time in Bengal, you see a lot of emotional moments with, with emotionalism, uh, and much of it is kind of theatrical, but here, this was all really, really spontaneous and natural, and he was just so full of love and the, uh, the situation and, and, and the love between us all. And, and, and he, um, the more he tried to control it, the more he, you know, and then gradually he had to kind of break eye contact and then he carried on. And I'll never forget that. It was a wonderful moment, really wonderful moment. And then we left that place and then we started to go up to Raj Sahi um, um, town itself. And it's quite a big town, quite a big town. And um, yeah, we were by ourselves. I remember there was just us three. We didn't take anybody from the other village. And um, again, it was spot the doty. And we just came into the town and the first person we saw, and he was with a bicycle as well, uh, Rosita came and spoke to him. And he, and he actually, felt we were quite close. We had to just kind of go a little bit further, turn left, and then there was this little Hindu uh, temple there, and so we, um, yeah, we went and parked the car there. Took our little, had our briefcases with these books, you know, or one briefcase, and um, we went through this little door. I went, and there were these people sitting on the in, in, the, in the floor. It was kind of office thing because it was a kind of Hindu cultural thing connected with the temple, and we went in there. And of course, they the first time they see you, you don't know who you are. And then Rosita started to speak in Bengali, and then he started to uh, us to sit down, and then he showed them the books and what we were wanting to do, and they all got kind of quite excited, and they just and they just said, oh, it was like we said, you know, we need somewhere to stay and everything, you know, and they just said, you know, we love you the most. Um, so I just. And he was very close by, just right, kind of a little bit round the corner from this this temple. So we went out, and there was this little shop. And we went into the shop, and it was a kind of a very clean and neat. And as you came in, you could actually see tulsi beads hanging there, and and, uh, 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 and bead bags kind of hanging on the wall. And you came in, and there was this lovely Vaishnava sitting there, this little Kumara. He was bare chested, blue bellied, sitting behind this little desk. And again, he looked, he's looking at one little girl that came in and made all this. And they were telling us, yes, that he's one of the most prominent Vaishnavas in, 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 in this town. You know, he's great, great devotee. And uh, we were sitting there talking, Rasika doing the talking, and he's kind of sitting there, you know, he's very polite and everything. And, and then he still, you can tell it's not really, he's not really kicking who we are and what we're there for. And then Rasika gets this book out uh, in Bengali, and on the back, it's a, just a picture of the lotus field in the Mayapur. It's about, and it just it says Sri Mayapur Dham. And he looks at it, and then he turns. He's going to turn. Looking at that, then looking at us, and looking, is that a book? Mayapur. And he just started to shake. He started to shake. And he just kind of pushed everything out of the way and just did kind of come and went and just did dandabats on the floor in front of us. And there was this older gentleman. He's a Goswami. He's a kind of lineage of, of Bengali Brahmin Vaishnavas. And he's lying in front of us foreigners and and he's shaking. And even the other chaps are a bit kind of like it's this is extraordinary behaviour. And he starts to embrace us and we're embracing. And he's emotion and he's just like 
you know, and he's like, yes, 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 I'm thinking, get someone who just kind of closes the shop or get someone to close it, and he just kind of like, uh, it comes with us, I think he jumps in the van, and we just kind of all go together, and we just go around the corner, and then we come to his place, because this is where we're going to stay now, it's all just happening. And um, it's in the town, it's not so much out, like the, those other places we just went were more villagey, and they're kind of in the town, but there's big open area and all these big bores and ponds. And then, so we, we came to his house that was connected to a big bore. Let me count again, it was like beautiful. All these houses have these beautiful kind of courtyards, you know, either L-shaped or complete around, uh, with verandas. And in the courtyard, there's always a tulsi, and then at one side there was a, a, a further down there was a cow shed, and then there was a big pump. And um, it's all very it, it, it's small, but very endearing, and very clean, and very beautiful. So that's we came to the house of Nikunjubi Hailgersram, who most probably I couldn't count my own the Jews must be mid sixties at this time at this at, at this at this period, you know, and. Um, and that first, and we went into the Bukor, had our bath, and then we came back. And, um, he, you know, he, his wife did all the cooking of the prashad. And they had the, in their little, this one little room, they had their temple room. And uh, before he was going to serve us a, a prashad, he wanted us to show us something. And I'd never heard this term before. He said, dog, dog dasha. He kept saying dog dasha. So he went into this room, and they had this beautiful altar. With sort of gold and tie, a beautiful original picture, I remember, of Radha and Krishna and Gopis from Jayapur. I could even tell the style. It was quite a beautiful little picture. A picture of the six Goswamis and a picture of his Guru Dave, and it was all very neat. And then there were these black stone plates with these preparations all covered in tulsi leaves. And he it's basically he wants to, us to re, you know uh, to reassure us that. He's a Vaishnava, and what everything from his house is, uh, he's offered it to God, and everything is prashadam. And, we, and it was just so beautiful. Everything about it was, talk about small, is beautiful, you know. And if I'm quite honest, this type of kind of bhakti and snarling, <laughs> I find more appealing than, than ostentatious big temples and everything. I found everything so touching. Um, and then we sat down to take prashadam. And of course, you see, in India, People don't just sit down with you and eat. They watch you eat and they serve you. Not just Vaishnavas, but general, you know, general householders. That's very common. And there we were, sitting there, taking this. I mean, there were so many beautiful preparations and subjects and chutneys and things. And, and we were, you know, we, and he was sitting there looking at us and his wife was behind and his son. And we had this fan, this fan on us while we were looking at the prasadam. You know, and then this thing happened where, as we were getting to near the, the bits of the the prashadam on our plates, we could see his eyes roving, roving, and we were just wondering, oh my goodness, what's going to happen now? Was it? Was I'm not really sure because he's just like um, you just never know what he's going to do because he's so humble and devotional. And then he suddenly went to our plate because in Vaishnava culture, oh. It's considered quite, you hear lots of stories about devotees taking prashad and remnants from other Vaishnavas. And this is what he was doing from us. He was trying to steal the remnants from our place of food that we were eating. And he was trying to eat to eat it. And that, you know, and then after that, we had to battle him off and say, no, 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 please. And he was like a little child trying to steal stuff off our plates and stuff. And, and, and then we went to uh, he had a jug of water at a certain place, and he was going to, uh, pouring it to wash our hands. And um, um, and as he was pouring it uh, with one, uh, you know, with one hand, the water was going on here. He put his other hand underneath to get the thing to come off the fingers from eating on his hand. And then, oh my goodness! Again, we had to try and stop him. And um, it was almost it was like this. We stayed with lovely Nikunji Bihari Goswami for quite a few days, and. Each time we had a, 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 pre a meal, we noticed there was like more preparations than the time before. Each time there was us eating it, we said, oh my goodness. And um, well, we, we had, I think, two rooms set aside for us. Uh, you know, we, we had to share a bed. It wasn't a big place. Uh, and, but the next morning, kind of, um, we went to bed quite late. Um, he was up way before us. 
and he would, uh, uh, you know, he would see it in the morning he'd be jacobala, he was doing his jacobees, and he had this little tulsi leaf that he'd be doing kultavuj, a plant on a seeker. And I can't describe how beautiful it is to see <laughs> such a lovely person in the morning. You wake up and you just see this lovely Vaishnava, you just automatically think of Krishna and feel purified, feel blessed. And, uh, and, 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 and then we're just getting settled and then these, these Kirtaniyas came, uh, two, two older men, and they came into our room and they just started to sing songs that we, some of the ones that we knew from them, uh, Govinda Das, Naratham Das, and, and they were really, really good. We just, uh, you know, we were having some little snacks and, and, and things and then they came in and then this lovely gentleman came with his two daughters. Nikhil Goswami. I was trying to remember his name earlier and I've suddenly remembered it. And he, again, he, he when you see pictures of Jagannath Mishra or something from the Chaitanya Tertiary, that's what he looked like. He looked like he just stepped out of that. And he had these young girl daughters who were most probably 10, 11. And they were just, everything about them, the, the color of their skin, the, the, the proportion of their earlobes, the, how fine their hair was and the features, everything was so, so refined. And these young girls, they, one of them played the harmonium and the other one, and they sung together, and it was just like, I literally was in heaven. This was my idea of heaven, really, and 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 and, and just to be, you, you know, to be effortlessly absorbed in Goranga and Chaitanya Lila. That just all you had to do was, a bit like Peter Sellers being there, you just had to be there, and all of this went on. And Nikhil Goswami really liked us and spoke quite good. The Kunji Bihari hardly spoke English. And, 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 and Nikhil Goswami, he immediately wanted to invite us to his house. So one day, the next day we went to his place and he had a house a little bit further away. He was a homeopath. I think he was the first homeopathic doctor I'd ever met. And it was very big in India, especially in Bengal. And while we were there at his house, um, he wanted to record me doing a kirtan for, and I did Tulsi Puja and he recorded me doing the, you know, Namo Namo Tulasi Krishna Priyasi Namo Namo Radha Krishna Seva Prabha E Abhilasi And he, just like keep saying this thing, you know, just as much as I was in, uh, enthralled with their culture, they were enamored by who we were, and it was just lovely, you know, and, and we were just getting spoiled, rotten, uh, and, 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 and having just wonderful association with people, and just sweet, sweet discussions, and, um, and then we, one night we did a program in town, quite a big one, they organized it, and it was lovely, and the country we hired Goswami was on stage with us, and he just felt so proud, we, we felt so proud to have him next to us. And he wasn't an orator, a lecturer. He could hardly even play the cartels properly, but um, um, his bhakti and devotion was kind of uh, outstanding, absolutely. Um, anyway, we spent a few days there, and then it was time for us to leave uh, this place, but where we were going to was actually the village of um, Nikunji Bihari Goswami. So we got in our vans, he came in with us, or maybe, yeah, I think he came with us into our, with our van, or, yeah, pretty sure that's how he, 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 he went. Um, and, and, or they came, maybe they went in another vehicle, but we all arrived at this house uh, in a village with a river quite near next to it. And um, his wife, his daughter was very, very hospitable, and they had, you know, a, a beautiful house, and it was like this. You know, if I get boring, I just repeat the same thing happens all the time. This incredible hospitality, going to bathe in rivers and perforce. In this river, though, when I went to bathe, oh, my God, I was swimming across, da, 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 da. People were screaming, and I could see coming down the red thing, this thing flapping. It looked like some kind of weird stingray or some strange thing. And I just swam like anything. Lucky I could. They, they're not used to people swimming as fast as I did. And I got to the other side, and this thing had disappeared, gone under. Ooh, you have to be a little bit careful. Can't just go in any old uh, kind of river or something. You have to find out what's going on there first. And um, and we did a program in, in their house in that in that night and again with the slideshows and everything. And then the next morning, I didn't feel physically really really good. I woke up with um, no, I don't know if 
people who didn't know what was going on, where the hell was Spooner? And um, they brought some, you know, our breakfast for us. And we, what was, we were only uh, planning to have been there for the night and then go off onto our, on our journey somewhere else. Because we'd been there for quite a, you know, four, five days, something, and the whole lot of Surrey would just turn up and come to Gary's house. And um, I just said, sorry, I can't, I'm feel, not feeling well, I need to lie down, I couldn't eat the food. It was very weird, you know, what that up about. And so immediately, like, they took me inside onto the room, and the next thing you know, I had um, um, his, his, I think it was, yeah, his sister, not his daughter, his sister, yeah, she had my hand, my hand, my head on her lap, she was rubbing my head, somebody was massaging my right arm, so I was just lying there, and someone was fanning, and then after a while, two different doctors came, it was unbelievable, uh, and, and, and everyone was just so concerned, I had no idea, I, I started to feel a bit better, just with the amazing level of, of, of TLC, I didn't eat anything, but then it was coming to the time, where it was time to leave, and I got enough kind of strength back, and I said, "It's okay, I can, I can travel from there." And as we were walking down to the van from the house, and the car was parked a little bit away, uh, um, um, the Kunjabi Hari, who was much smaller than me, and this much older, I was at this time, what was I? I was early twenties. My goodness, and he's in his sixties. This venerable Vaishnava. He's holding an umbrella over my uh, my head and holding it, holding it because I'm weak and sick. He's trying to hold me. And as we're getting near to the van, I can I can feel him starting to shake, and I'm going and I'm inside. I'm thinking, oh no, I don't want to come off here. I don't want to come here with this. Oh no, and I'm trying to kind of help. And then we just get down to we get to the car. And we're just about to kind of kind of go and do something, and suddenly he falls down on the ground at our feet, and and kind of weeping and saying, um, uh, "I could tell something. Ami puppy, Ami, I am a sinner. I am a this lowborn. Thank, you. please give me your creep. Give me your mercy." And we had to kind of, I had to lift him up, and each one of us, and I remember Mahaprabhu was quite staunch kind of chap didn't show his emotions and I tell you what when the Kunji Bihari Goswami embraced us my goodness every one of us we had tears in our eyes we, it was uncontrollable <coughs> and uh, woo, I felt so blessed just to have met this man this person I mean he was just like he was just like yeah you know humility it was just everything that you could think of good qualities of a Vaishnava he had them basically, and um, and then we went off and we travelled and we went to. The, I remember we travelled. I was in the back of the van and I was not feeling very very good. And we arrived um, in, in this village, and and, and 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 then you get some of these really strong village farm guys. You know these villages, they're incredible. Out in the middle of nowhere, down lots of bumpy roads, we got to this place. And when we got there, they actually, you know, they told him we got one of our, you know, chaps is ill in the back, and 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 this somebody just came and they just lifted him like in their arms, took me inside into this big room. I remember it was a big, you know, big. It had high ceilings, but it had wooden um, beams. There was mud walls. It was very cool, and they put me on a big boat, a bed with 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 mosquito net around it. They just let me sit, lie there. And it was, I think I just kind of dozed off because it would be a difficult resting in the back. And then I was kind of woken up a bit later and the sun had gone down. And there was this, we were taken to this area away from the house and it was just one of these magical scenarios again. There was a, I think there was a fire. Uh, and I, I, I just remember they were doing this arty and they were quite tribal and far out. And they did the arty song that uh, of Naratam Das Thakur, which is what the one that we sing by Bhaktivinoda Thakur, that's kind of based on that RT song, and they were singing it. And there was this one lady who was like a kind of a Vaishnavi tantric witch doctor type mixture. Uh, you see a bit of quite a lot of that in Bengal if you go into the middle areas. And she had one solid dreadlock, 
a bit like Mark used to have, Mark and Penny Mark used to have his one dreadlock, but this was massive. It was like a cape, it kind of came, and she had it folded as a loop. So you can imagine it just looked really peculiar, solid mass of, of, of hair. And during the kirtan, she started to sway and things and then kind of fall on the ground. And she had her chela, who had a similar hairstyle, but a little bit smaller. And she was next to her and whispering and saying words in her ear. And it was all kind of quite magical. But I, I couldn't eat much again that night, you know. And then we went on a little bit the next day. And, and, and I didn't know what was wrong with me. Nobody, I didn't really know what was happening to me. I just thought I'd just like got a little bit food poisoning or something. And we stayed at one ashram. I think we were heading, we headed, we did, went quite towards Maiman Singh. And then from Maiman Singh, then, uh, um, you know, it's a, it's amazing because this period, during this period uh, of, of, of traveling around, it was only over a few weeks, the whole thing. But in my mind, it's like this kind of amazing epoch and, and experience because of, of all these things that happened and also the intensity of the the emotions and and, 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 and and the visuals and the people and the context and everything. Um, it was like being in, in, in you know, a movie. And, and later when I saw Satyajit Ray movies, uh, you know, Pucker Punch and everything, you know, if you've been to Bengal, then, you know, he captures it fantastically in, in those movies. We came to the ashram of one Swami Nigamananda, who's, who was, who'd passed. And it was unusual. They have a strange uh, philosophy. They're a kind of minor sect in Bengal. Um, um, they have quite a few, and then Puri, and he tried to fuse uh, the philosophy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Shankaracharya together, great stuff, I don't know really where he was at with his teachings, but he had quite, he had very impressive pictures of him sitting with long dreadlocks, amazing, tall, impressive, with leopard skin, and a big hammer, and a trident in his hand, and in fact, we discovered in Bangladesh, there was quite a few little sub Vaishnava sects, that were, um, um, well, the Kunji Bihari Goswami and, and, and uh, 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 the, um, the other Goswami I just mentioned in Raj Sangi, he was actually a, a Dvaita Vamsa. And, and, and the, Kunji, uh, the Kunji Bihari Goswami, he had his, his Goswami guru lineage. He had a guru and a guru lineage. And 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 uh, but then in, when we came to this um, um, when we went to certain places we could see pictures of Ram Thakur and um, God damn it these pictures of people I've lost the uh, I've lost the plot of me um, um, the one with the afro haircut I've just suddenly forgotten his name at this moment but anyway I'll, it will come to me they were they were Jagat Bandhu. So Jagat Bandhu, um, he actually was the kind of guru of um, Premananda Bharati, who was the um, sadhu who came to the West and just after Vivekananda. He's quite controversial. You see his pictures where he's sitting in a kind of like crossed like this, quite young with kind of afro hair. Anyway, in Bengal, many of these people, they all would think that they are reincarnations of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, like some other famous avatars as well. Uh, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, popular avatars. Um, so uh, we discovered that was quite big. And not only that, sometimes uh, we found out that um, these Namyagas weren't always Hare Krishna. And some of the groups that go to these, to perform these kirtans, they're paid by the people to put them up. And um, I didn't actually, I, I spoke to Vyasaki about this, and he said that he'd once gone to a place where the Kirtaniyas had to see, sing a, um, a, a, a mantra, something like Guru Brahma, Guru Sham, Guru Deva, Guru Brahma, some kind of unusual mantra uh, that, uh, uh, that, that they, that, you know, and they, they weren't quite happy because they didn't really know what it was all about, but they did it. So discover that little side of Bangladesh, and that was quite interesting. Now, um, I actually went back to Dhaka. We all eventually went back to Dhaka. Uh, because I was sick, I and mean, they wanted to be getting a little bit concerned, and I, was, I think maybe to stock up with more books as well, and, and because I was sick, they needed somebody else to join the party, and apparently uh, there was this other devotee that was coming at that time, Nishtula, he had just, he was a Canadian devotee, and spent some time in West Bengal, and he was coming over to Bangladesh. So we went back to Dhaka, 
And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually stop the story now because it's just turned nine o'clock and um, there's a big kind of world meditation uh, um, thing going on today at nine o'clock. And I'm, I might come to America with David Cabal, loads of people, and that feels like I just want to connect with that. Maybe some other people who are watching might be. Um, I'm going to continue on tomorrow. Uh, I, I will carry on tomorrow, and I will continue about um, what happens next when I get to Dhaka, basically, and 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 uh, the kind of like the the resolution of this kind of the journey because it's I learned quite a few lessons and. and surprise dip into Gaudiya Vaishnava literature by returning to Dhaka at this time. And remember the temperature is getting higher and higher and higher and higher. And, and what happens is basically when I get to Dhaka I discover um, 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 I've got jaundice, a form of hepatitis and that's not very good and which is contagious and um, I was just in the first wave of it. In fact uh, when I got to, to Bangalore at the D Dhaka because uh, uh, I kind of, I wasn't sure how sick I was. Vyasaki made a, 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 some vegetables with this layer pack butter, and there was some watermelon, and I ate it. And that night, oh my goodness gracious, I went into most probably the worst form of illness I've ever experienced and will ever experience up to now at least. Uh, and 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 uh, it was intense. It was intense all night long rushing to the toilet, vomiting, out this end, out that end, oh my god. And, in, and also at that time, Ilapati had come, who was later to become Bhakti Vikash, he was there. And I remember I was just kind of waking up all night long, going to the toilet. And when I woke up in the morning, I, I just couldn't move. I couldn't do anything. My body was, was, was you know, was wrecked from it all. I think yes, uh, Ilapati gave me a kind of little bit of a massage just to get me going. And then I went to the doctor, and then he asked me what colour my stool was, and it was white, it just gone white. And he said, and he said, and is your urine like Pepsi Cola? And I said, yes. He said, you've got jaundice. So that's what happened, and that's what I was going through. And now I was kind of going to be almost quarantined. So that's going to be, but it, you know, in all of these kind of quarantining stories, there's some, there's always a little kind of silver lining. So that's what we're going to discover. Thank you so much for joining me on this part of the story. Um, um, it was a, 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 a very, uh, a, 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 um, it affected me just these few weeks of traveling around at this time and experiencing this pristine Gaudiya Vaishnavas and these incredible characters. I wish that everybody, um, whatever's going on in your life, whatever's been thrown at you, there is, I, I keep saying that all the time, but it is every day. I'm feeling different. I feel different than yesterday, and then I woke up today, and I'm in a different mood. Uh, I'm feeling differently about things, and I, I read some kind of, see some article, I hear something, I talk to a friend, and uh, different things affect me. But generally, um, I'm, 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 I'm doing fine, and I really hope that all of you are too. And if you are facing some crises, then I hope that they get resolved shortly. Lots of love. Big hugs. Take care. Hari Om.